Previously on the world's fastest bobber build. Hi guys, welcome back to Thornton 100 Motorcycles YouTube channel. My name's Jody, and today we're going to be building the engine for WFB.2. We're gonna be upgrading a load of components. So much going on in this bike. A lot of it we've developed ourselves. Now, I'm no engine builder. I've built a few engines in my time, but I'm determined to build this one myself. I'm gonna be building it using the manual from Triumph. So I'll be able to, a lot of it will be factory spec, um, but we're just gonna be upgrading a load of components within this as well as a few bits that we designed, such as the clutch too. So gonna get this over onto the bench over there. It's gonna be an exciting journey. So stay tuned guys, this one's gonna be a good one. Okay guys, so the crankcases are split now. We have the top half and the bottom half here. Now I've taken the crankshaft out and that doesn't need much disassembly. So I'm gonna take the gearbox out now, take it all the way apart, and I'm gonna take it to give it super finish. So super finish is gonna basically gonna put it in a tumbler, strengthen up these parts so we don't give any, any chance for cracks or stress fractures or anything to form on these parts. So we're gonna go head over there once it's all apart. Okay, so we're inside Samuel's factory now and we have all of our gearbox laid out. Everything has been masked up with just standard tape just to leave the gear surfaces exposed because they're the bits that we want to focus on and make sure that we get those nice and shiny. So this is the machine that we're going to be using. It's a shot peening machine and what we have is a big hose like this with a nozzle on the end that is controlled from the outside via these gloves so what we have here is very 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 small very fine finished balls and we're going to fire this out at a certain psi into the face of the gears and that is just going to apply compressive stress to the face of those gears and just get them nice and uniform all the way across so we'll use a slightly rougher one to begin with and then we'll move to a finer one and that should give us a really nice finish ready for when we chuck it into the tumbler and we get that real nice smooth super finish cool this has made a big difference, especially under a microscope as well. So this is the first step to getting that really smooth, super hard, polished finish that we're after to make sure these gears are super strong and run super efficiently when they're inside the new engine. Okay, so back again with the shaft that we're focusing on. We've unmasked this part, we've unmasked this part as well. We want to super finish these surfaces, but there's no point in firing really big balls at a very small radius part like this. We might as well go in with the much finer media and finish off these parts here. Make sure we can get into every single nook and cranny. So this one's ready to go now. We see a lot of this coloring, this discoloration go as well. And we'll see this finish coming up a lot nicer with a nice matte finish, ready to go into the final process. Right, so process two has been finished and we've gone in with a slightly finer shot peen as well. And as you can see on the magnifying glass here that we have a much finer finish on all of these surfaces as well. So now we've done all of these gears, it's gonna time, it's gonna be time to go through to the REM stage, which will happen tomorrow, where I'll like do a little bit more explaining as to what's be going, gonna be going on. We're gonna be essentially adding chemicals and tumbling it with a ceramic bead as well to get this even shinier than it is now. Okay, so we've got the crankshaft for our new WFB here. This thing is so heavy, it weighs 17 kilos. Now, we haven't shot peened this one, we're just going to super finish it. So behind us, we have the rim machine. So we are going to load this up in there now. It has a vibratory motion, which is going to allow us to polish up this surface. This will get left in for around eight to 10 hours. Once it's all done, it will all be finished up and they'll go through another process as well. So first process is going to be quite aggressive. We're going to use a chemical to actually soften the face of the metal, which will allow us to take off the tops, the peaks at microscopic level. All that soft material will come off and this thing will end, come up looking really shiny out here. So I'm just gonna load it in now. 
and then we just press the button and off it goes. Okay, so while the crankshaft is in that machine polishing, we're gonna load all of the gearbox into this machine, which is slightly smaller. Same process, so we're gonna add that chemical in, soften the surface, so we can take off all of those peaks and troughs and get it really nice and smooth. So this shaft is the one we've been following all the way through the process. The next time you see this, it's gonna be super shiny and almost mirror finished. Right, so the crankshaft has all been finished and super polished now. So I've just put the output shaft gear set in. Over here, we have um, the selector drum and all of the forks that are in now. So we should have all of our gears on the back side here. So what you have is your selector, your gear selector, which is my five mil T-bar. So um, we're in first gear right now. And what we could do is just flick it round into neutral. So we have both of our gears, which spin around like that so we're not engaged. So what we're able to do then is flick it around into, uh, should be able to flick it around into second gear. And then spinning onwards, we should be able to go into third gear. And then spinning again, we should be able to go into fourth gear, fifth gear, and hopefully sixth gear. So that's really good. So all of the gears are engaged. So we have sixth, fifth, uh, going back down fourth, third, second, neutral, and then first as well. So really happy with that. So what it's time to do now is get the crankshaft installed into the crank cases. Uh, we need to make sure that the counterbalance shafts are timed correctly. So what we have over here is the crankshaft and we have all of our webs or big lobes on the back there as well. So that's a big counter counterweight for our primary vibrations um, of the pistons going up and down. So what we do is we counterbalance those with the front balancer shaft and the rear balancer shaft. Now what these are essentially larger shafts with big weights attached to them. And they are both driven by this central gear, which is on the middle of the crankshaft here. So what I need to make sure is that everything is timed correctly. So when one big lump of metal is spinning that way, we have another big lump of metal spinning that way. And that means that everything is spinning correctly and in time and we're not getting any crazy vibrations and vibrating myself and this bike apart. Very excited to get this engine back together. This all should go back together really quickly now, but my, the bit I'm most excited about is getting our new supercharger mount slash side engine casing as well as the clutch which goes on the other side as well because they're the parts that we've designed so this is pretty standard stuff looking forward to the parts that we've made and seeing this engine completely finished all as one unit now so it's a lot to take in so i'm going to get my head down focus and try and get this all back together right now and try not to make any mistakes Okay, so the crank cases are back together now. Everything's timed up correctly. I'm really happy with how everything's gone. So I've just put all of the new bolts in. So these are stretch bolts. So what we have to do is go through and tighten them up in a specific sequence, tighten them up to a certain amount, back them all off and then tighten them all up again. So that went really well, but there's not a lot to see there. So what I'm gonna do now is get the oil pump and the coolant pump and basically prime them. So we just put a bit of oil in here. And as you can see, we're just putting it in there and just turning this and that's going to spill out but you see those bubbles coming out there that means that that's pumping so if i pull that the other way that should suck the oil in okay so that's sat in correctly like this is the outer clutch basket A grinding paste and what we're doing is we're basically making both of those surfaces sit absolutely perfectly okay so the valves are all lapped in now so they're sealing really nicely so I just wanted to show you what we've done inside here so basically what we've had done is we've had the whole head 3d scanned and then what we've done is we've designed the program in the CNC machine to basically get a tool come in here open up these inlets 
and open it up all the way around into the valves as well and make all of the air flow really nicely and really smoothly through the inlet, past the inlet valves and into the cylinder. Same thing as well, in the cylinder, we've machined out the combustion chamber where the spark plug sits and where all the valves sit as well. So we've made that a lot smoother. And then what we've done out the back here as well, same thing, opened it up, more airflow as well, out of the exhaust valves and then out of the head as well. So we should be flowing lots more air through this head. So what I'm gonna do now is get the valves into their seats and get them secured in place with the valve springs. Now, what we have over here is the valve springs. So what we'll need to do um, is we'll need to put new valve stem seals in. So this is a seal that seals the stem. So all this oil up here doesn't get contaminated with combustion carbons, stuff like that from the combustion chamber in there. So what we also need to do, or what we, ha what we have done, is we've actually added a spacer to the bottom of the valve spring seat. So when this valve spring is fully compressed, it's a it's 29 millimeters between the top and the bottom. And that applies 95 newton meters of pressure to, or force even, to the valve. What we do is if we space out this valve spring seat by two millimeters with this little washer here, what that does is it increases the force on the spring. We just wanna make sure that when we've got loads of pressure in that cylinder that we are able to close the valve just at the precise time when we want to as well. So by spacing out and preloading the valve spring seats, we are able to apply more pressure to close the valve and that way we shouldn't have any valve float issues. So I'm gonna get all of this sat in now with the collets, get new stem seals in there as well. And then this head is done, ready to put the pistons in, barrels on, head gasket, head in, and then this butt engine is pretty much buttoned up. She's sealing good. Right guys, so as you can see, we have the engine all back together now. So I spent the weekend doing the tappets, the valve clearance, all of that kind of stuff, and then got the valve rocker cover on. So engine is pretty much all back together. I'm really happy with how it's gone back together as well. It turns over nicely on the crank as well, which is really good because it's just in time for this delivery of absolutely insane parts that we've just got back. So this is our one of one custom built, designed completely in-house by us at Thornton 100 supercharger kit for the C30 Rotrex centrifugal supercharger unit that we're gonna put on this WFB. So these parts are billet aluminium, completely made out of one big lump that we've completely designed from scratch. So we've got all of our mounts in here for the generator and then also on the back here we have the recess for the oil tank for the supercharger so this literally fits in here literally millimeter precision i'm really happy with all the gaps and everything that sits there like that as well so that's the supercharger is going to sit there and then basically all the oil tank for the supercharger is all held within here as well so we don't have to have an oil cooler as well because we've got loads of cooling fins on there as well so really happy with what that looks like so i'm just going to pull that back off and show you guys the front again because i'm going to show you how this goes together so we've got here this is the um bottom pulley for the supercharger so this mounts onto the engine here so we've got this custom prop spigot here which i've shrunk into the end of the crank as well so that's all keyed so that will sit on the end of there obviously on the outside of the casing. So this is gonna go here. So we've got bearing in there as well, which holds everything. And then we've got the custom supercharger case, which actually you, Stevie, behind the camera, was responsible for designing as well. So this really cool design here looks really smart as well. And we've got the TH there. So that will sit over the top there like so. And then you'll have the pulley spinning underneath there like that and that just looks absolutely insane so obviously that goes back there we've got the rotrex c30 custom supercharger obviously with the completely custom billet impeller which is need, going to need to be mounted onto the back there and we've also got a prototype 
of the clutch here as well. So this is a really interesting bit of kit, but I'll go into more detail on the clutch later on and what's gone on with that. It's been an absolute nightmare. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to get the engine back into the frame, get all the bolts in, stuff like that, and just get the bolts spec'd, and then we'll be able to order all of our titanium bolts to mount the engine on. So once the engine is all in, we've got it to a rolling chassis, we'll be able to put all of the supercharger on with all of the seals, all of the engine oils, all of the greases and everything like that, and then once that's back on, it's full steam ahead. So I want to give a massive, massive, massive thank you to k &N, which is today's video sponsor, because honestly, this build couldn't happen without those boys. So let me tell you a little bit about k &N. So I've been using k &N for my entire life, and it's a brand that I fully know and trust, and they have so many different size filters, pod filters, panel filters for all different applications as well. I have them in my personal car, I have them in the work van, and obviously we have them on the WFB. So we're using this pod filter, which is actually a pod filter that we used on the last WFB as well. So it's fully washable and it flows so much air. And it's so important that all of that air going in through here, which is literally from filtered air directly from the front of the bike, through our charge tube and into the back of that supercharger, which was just horrendously expensive that was also sponsored by rotrex as well so thank you so much rotrex for that custom impeller as well on it so we need to protect that impeller by using a K&N air filter okay so it's time for the engine back in the frame and i reckon the best way to do that oh that's still pretty heavy you know is to put the engine on the bench there and then drop the frame onto the top so yeah i think it's going to be a pretty pretty simple process look at the strength Convenient. Get on there. Okay. It's not that bad. Yeah, I've done that before. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the WFB is really starting to come along now. All the fuel pumps in, the coils, all the plenum, everything's in. This is just on, but everything's just put in and loosely bolted up because I've got to spec the titanium bolts. I've also gone ahead and had, well, commissioned these two bolts here to be made out of titanium as well, because I think they'll just look really good. It's such a visible bolt. I think they'll look really cool, the nice little TH on the end of them as well, so they look really cool. So in this box over here, I've just collected the forks um, so these have been completely custom made for us. So they are shower forks, a load of adjustment on the top here for compression, and then we've got rebound adjustment at the bottom here too. So we've had the top polished and then coated in black, and then we had the stanchion tie nitrided in gold, and then we've had the bot the foot coated in matte black as well, and it looks so smart. So I'm gonna chuck these into the bike now and see what this looks like. They look fantastic. So hopefully this will all fit. This is our new triple clamp. There you go is I'll just line up the shower logo there. We're actually literally waiting for the front wheel to arrive. Um, so they will be here literally any minute now. And then what I'll be able to do is put the front tire onto the front wheel, which is always nerve wracking with a carbon front wheel because they're so delicate. We also need to put the um, front mud guard in this bike. So a lot of the front mud guards that we'll use, we actually use the same as what's on that bike over there. So that's a, one of our shower USD front mudguard kits. So we've got the front tire there right and ready to go. So that's a Pirelli Super Corsa V3. Um, so I'll just pull that out of the way and check that out. <laughs> wow, that looks fantastic. I'm so happy with what they look like, honestly. I'm glad we went with the gold as well. I think that's gonna tie in really well with the final color. 
There's going to be a few moments that I'm going to be really happy at. A, the, the, top, the first time it starts. B, the, when it hits 300 on the dyno. <laughs> and C, when we run a fucking minimum of a nine second on the quarter mile. So there's a few milestones there. A lot of fun times coming up.